Good morning, everybody. We are reacting to the the big breaking news that the UK government has sanctioned Roman Abramovich. What does it mean for Chelsea? Chelsea and Limbo Land. This is seismic news this morning. All of Abramovich's UK assets have now been frozen and the sale of the club is on hold. So many people asking us questions at the moment, which uh, Simon is answering, as many of them as he can. And Simon, you're doing a great job. Uh, One of the questions this morning is, will the government, in some shape or form now, get involved in the sale process of the football club and a lot of you are asking that considering it's the government who have come in and sanctioned Abramovich so the chair of the DCMS is Julian Knight MP and I'm delighted to say Julian who's having a absolutely whirlwind morning like so many other people of course uh, has taken time out to join us live Julian good morning to you yeah yeah it, it doesn't feel so much like limbo land to me it feels more like a, a ride on flamingo land at the moment i have to say it's all over the shop isn't it it what is a mess, eh? it is all over the, the shop and yes what a mess so uh, the uk government sanctioned abramovich julian you must have known this was coming uh, no i did well i didn't know specifically it was coming i wasn't informed prior to that because obviously the sports minister probably because of market sensitivity can't really approach people in order to tell them in advance. However, reading the runes, seeing the the moves that Abramovich has made in recent days, it didn't take a rocket scientist to see that this was on the cards. Uh, but I mean, it isn't it isn't the same as impounding a uh, a yacht or a private jet. This is a football club's a living, breathing organism, if you like, and it contains a huge amount of. Uh, importance to communities and to our our actual national life. So uh, the actions that have been taken are very understandable, given the links that Abramovich has with Putin and the need to ensure that we effectively cut off Putin's regime at the knees. And we need to do that. We can't go half measures with this. But at the same time, we do need fairness and clarity for Chelsea and its fans and its staff. Right, exactly that. So it's our understanding here, what we do know is that Chelsea can't sell any more match tickets. Only season ticket holders can go to games. Now, one thing Simon was repeatedly asked by supporters this morning is, can I renew my season ticket for next season? And, yeah. and I think the answer is no, isn't it? Well, season tickets are seen as debtors. So I would be, therefore, the, 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 effectively, the, the, the club which is in abeyance has to effectively fulfill its debt so season tickets at the moment it's fine it's okay i personally will be calling on the sports minister to take a very common sense much more common sense approach with this and if we can in some way ensure that season ticket holders can renew and frankly that people who want to go and see away fans etc can still go and see chelsea at stamford bridge then i'd like to see that happen the thing is these rules are designed for, for assets which aren't really football clubs, they're something else and much more sort of solid, if you like, yes, yeah. tangible. So I think this is still a work in progress. I'm going to be asking the minister whether or not there can be some uh, dispensation, if you like, but at least some nuance in order to ensure that, that football fans and the staff and players at Chelsea have more certainty and frankly don't live in a, a, a sort of, as you say, a complete limbo land, a sort of parallel universe where yeah, yeah. they can't watch matches, they can't, they, they, they can't do any sort of interactions with the club or can't go to the club shop or anything like that. We need some, some understanding here. Yeah, you can't buy any merchandise now. Simon's on hand. I'm going to bring him in in a second. But Julian, one, one of the big questions, I suppose, is that will you and the government oversee or play a part in overseeing the sale of the the club, the sale of Chelsea, and also oversee that none of the proceeds go anywhere near Abramovich. Yeah, well, look, I won't be doing that personally because I'm the chair of the committee which scrutinises the government rather than government itself. However, as I understand it, any form of sale would need some form of government approval. And the reason for that is, frankly, where does the money go? I mean, Abramovich has said that he put the profits to all, crucial word there, all the victims of the war in the Ukraine. Well, what does that mean? Does it mean it goes to the Russian side? Does it mean it goes... So, frankly, that isn't enough in any any way or respect. So if a sale does occur, it needs to basically be monitored to the nth degree. And unfortunately, that really isn't probably politicians' jobs to get involved in the sale of football clubs, but we're living in very weird times right now. Yeah. But ultimately, this, we mustn't forget, this inconvenience, this distress that's been caused to Chelsea fans, and I do get it, 
is is ultimately the responsibility of one man and he sits in the Kremlin and frankly his actions are an utter disgrace and we need to be always focused on that as well. Julian effectively who who is any potential buyer buying the club from now from this point onwards I mean I'm being asked all sorts of questions here is one from Bob how much control does Abramovich have any control now over the sale price? Uh, Look, frankly, I don't know. I'll be frank with you at this point. I think that's another matter that we need to have clarity with exactly who it is who's administrating this. Because obviously, my brother tried to pass this over to the charitable trust without yeah. asking the people who are on the charitable trust. <clears throat> yes. So would it be them? I, I think they would need to be spoke. They need to come in and see the, the sports minister and discuss that to basically find a way forward. I can't, I can't foresee any way in which... Abramovich is involved in any process to do with Chelsea going forwards while the war in Ukraine stays as it is. As far so, as as far as the sale so as far as the sale is concerned, Julian, the vehicle some vehicle needs to be established to be able to uh, receive proceeds before the outcome of where those proceeds are determined or go to. So as far as the government position is concerned, is there? It's very difficult for you to answer because at this moment in time you'll be squaring circles. So will the sports secretary. But the bottom line is, is there's no reason to stop this disposal of Chelsea if we are assured that the proceeds are going nowhere near Abramovich. I agree with you. I agree with you. And nowhere near Russia. So the vehicle, so a vehicle can be quite easily established. I don't like quite easily, but I, would, I think that's some, an option that really must be looked at. Well, we that's the question I was going to ask you next, yeah. because the, the obligation for Abramovich to be forced to sell. It's one thing saying you want to sell something. It's another thing being forced to be sold. Yeah, yeah it's a fire sale, and therefore yeah. you get a far lower price. And, and, and don't forget as well... Well, he's not receiving the proceeds, because he's already, he's, he's already made a public statement, which was trying to circumvent this position from the outset, which is... Yeah. It was a slightly ambiguous one, which I never understood at the time, because if he's not taking back his loans, there's nothing to do with net proceeds. The gross proceeds of the sale are going to be distributed in the manner that he suggested. So I didn't know when net proceeds come into it. Whatever he sells it for, there's no repayment of loans to him. It's straightforward out yeah, to... Yeah, how the... much it gets if, it gets if it gets... Well, it was originally valued at £3 billion, but I imagine that that price is And that's what I was going to a suggest. A lot lower. Yeah, yeah, I imagine it's a lot lower. Uh, and I would imagine, frankly, that the, the sports minister, unfortunately, I mean, he's not going to love this. I know he's going to have to get directly involved in the. Uh, well, of course, the, the other side of the officials. argument, the other side of the argument, Julian, is of course every pound that someone pays less for the football club is one less pound that can go to the Ukrainian victims. So, with that in mind, you've got the buyer coming in that will want to leverage the price down, and you've got a position where every pound that comes in gets donated if if we hold it to the account that we're being led to believe that Abramovich suggests will be the case. Then every pound that's paid less for Chelsea is one pound that less goes to, goes less towards yeah, the victims. Yeah, Simon, though, I, I, I sort of emphasised at the start. He said all the victims of the war. Oh, I know we've got to distinguish absolutely. Yeah, but the yeah, point is, the point is, is that as the, the, the headlines will be, Julian. You know how this works. The headlines will be the sale of Chelsea is on hold. When realistically yeah. speaking, the sale of Chelsea doesn't need to be in hold, on hold as long as a vehicle is established to make sure that not one single ruble, euro, pound goes anywhere near Russia. No, or but, no but there was a deadline for next Tuesday, Simon, and that, that's gone now. A deadline for what? The sale. So, uh, the, the bidders, for, the for bidders to make their bid. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so I mean, the process I, I has that, been halted. That, that is now, a matter of fact. I think, but I think that deadline now, which is presumably set by Mr. Abramovich now, is, is almost sort of slightly irrelevant in the fact that now this 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 asset, if you like, is now frozen, and that, and I do agree that there needs to be a means by which found to dispose of this asset. That's a terrible talk about a football club like that, but yeah, to ensure the sale of this asset, safe sale and transfer, to ensure the future of Chelsea Football Club. And you are right that if there is any profit, proceeds, etc., whatever way you cut it. And that we make sure that not a single ruble goes to anywhere near Russia, Putin, etc. Uh, I, I, I think this is going to have to be, a, it's going to be a big job for officials. It's going to take, not instantly, next Tuesday. I don't think we can set any such deadlines like that. I just think basically we've got to get this done over the next few weeks. Find a way in which we can keep the show on the road. Ensure that fans can go and watch their beloved football team, that away supporters can go and watch their team as well, yeah. uh, which is very important. Uh, as I say, it is a work in progress. No, this is, in my memory, this has never happened before. In any anywhere in terms of a football club being frozen in this way, but it's infinitely it's achievable, though, Julian, isn't it? I mean, every what we're trying to do is starve the revenue from Chelsea Football Club, not because yeah. it's Chelsea Football Club, because we don't want any benefit for Abramovich yeah. or for Russia. So, if any proceeds are received in another vehicle that Chelsea can't access at the moment in time and are held in a bank, yeah, it, 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 it what doesn't you're talking stop. about is like a trust. Yeah. What you're talking is a trust. Indeed, trust, I am. Indeed, I am. Yeah. I think I think that's eminently possible. 
And I would imagine that their minds are already turning to yeah. that because you know, the, the situation as it stands right now is, to me, looks completely untenable. I understand why it has to be like that, but we have to move forwards and we've got to make sure that, as I say, Chelsea Football Club survives, uh, a new owner is found, and uh, effectively we ensure that there is no benefit to Russia whatsoever. Julian, Julian Knight, MP, thank you so much for joining us on what no is a crazy busy morning. Julian, thank you. Cheers. Bye. OK, stay with us uh, all this uh, in the morning that the UK government decided enough's enough and they sanctioned Rowan Abramovich. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.